Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what is algebraic geometry. Today I would like to talk about something that has a fairly strange name. So I, I think it comes from German. In German it's Geringtraum, a very strange name. So ring space, um, ring space, a space with rings some, in some sense. And we'll see that is actually um, is our entering gate to the idea of relations between varieties. So I've preaching like varieties are fantastic for a long time now. Um, and actually it's not really true. Well, varieties are so fantastic, but there's something better going on. And this is will be relation between spaces. And these ringed spaces is essentially, we'll see, the idea to consider a variety together with its chief of functions, which um, then, well, chief of function is good. I hope uh, convinced you at this point. And then it kind of, naturally the definition of a morphism naturally appears in this setting but let's just get started here um so uh, there's this classical example in topology that a donut and a coffee mock are actually equivalent but i feel like that's way too complicated the correct example in my opinion is this um fantastic animation that you can try to google that a cow and a swear are actually equivalent and how does it work well you put in a little straw into the cow and it's blow it up if you want and then you have that a cow and a sphere are the same which is much easier than uh, a donut and a coffee mug in some sense and even more surprising i kind of can believe that people kind of feel like ah donut coffee mug there's some hole there yeah. but a sphere and a cow uh, is uh, anyway um by the way kind of off topic i guess uh in topology people usually confuse a donut and a torus which is very different. Torus is hollow. A donut, I hope, is not hollow. If you buy a donut and it's hollow, you have been fooled. So that's, there you go. Anyway, that was like a little bit off topic here. The, the main slogan, which originates in last years, in last year, last century of mathematics, is that spaces are nice. Everyone likes spaces, uh, but maps are actually much better. If you want to think about an easier example than my, my cow here, I think about linear algebra. Okay, a vector space is a nice thing, but really a matrix is what makes linear algebra important. Uh, so in kind of the same type of flavor applies everywhere in mathematics, right? So topologists never study a circle as an equation, but rather kind of the equivalence class of circles. Someone who's interested in linear algebra would most rather study matrices, uh, properties of matrices, eigenvectors, eigenvalues, whatever, something like that, instead of vector spaces. So we have done something wrong, right? In the previous videos, we've done something wrong. We are just focusing too much on uh, varieties when we actually should study maps between them, right? But to, to even go there, we should answer the question, well, what are maps, what are morphisms between varieties or sheaves of whatever of varieties? What are morphisms in this setup? I just wrote morphisms of sheaves um, because that's what we were discussing in the previous videos, like this idea to replace varieties by sheaves. But essentially, you can think of what is a morphism of a variety, and I will do that anyway. And we just put both together and call it a ringed space. So here's a definition, the definition of a ringed space. Um, rings attached to sets. So ringed just really means you have rings, uh, as right geometry likes rings, remember. Rings attached to, to, to open sets, so rings, right? We want rings. And how do we do that? Well, we just consider a space itself, but also the sh some sheaf on it, because some sheaf of rings. And that's what we call a ringed space. And it's completely general. It works for a topological space, and you just have some sheaf of rings. Again, I highlight here algebraic geometry likes rings. That's why it's a sheaf of rings instead of a sheaf of vector spaces or a sheaf of whatever sets or a sheaf of whatever. It's really a sheaf of rings. Um, of algebra, some algebraic structure of that form. And the key example, essentially the only example I want you to keep in mind for quite a while, is we take a variety and we replace this idea that a variety is nice by morphism should be nice. And the first thing we do is we attach its maps, its regular functions, its maps to the ground field to our space. So we consider the variety together with its sheaf of uh, regular functions. This is supposed to, this looks like a theta. This was supposed to be a curly O. So like this guy here, 
Ah, this is, this is really terrible. Looks like a theta. Anyway, so we consider the space together with its functions, which is already much better. And that's what is the kind of the key example of a ring space, because now every open set in our variety has a ring attached to it and a ring of functions. And you could do that, of course, uh, very, very general. Or any sheaf attached to it, and it would be any sheaf of rings, and it would be uh, a ring space. But really for this video, uh, the main key example are those where there's some maps to the ground field. Okay, so let's let's keep the setting. Maps to the ground field, not general sheets, just maps to the ground field. So what could be then a, a morphism uh, between varieties? If we think of a variety as a pair, yeah? so here's my variety, here's my variety, but really is a variety plus maps like this guy and plus maps like this guy to let's say my ground field is a real number right so the, the line down here so what then could be a morphism of varieties well you we already have this little diagram this little, beautiful little diagram explains everything so what can you what can you do well if you have some map between v and w you can compose it with the regular functions down to r okay sure then you get a map from v down to r right so we get this type of map and yeah we could kind of say that this map is actually a regular function right demands to make sense that what whatever i wrote down here is usually called uh the pullback and i guess some notation here is messed up forget this notation so this is my notation for the pullback so we have the map phi and i call v star f the pullback which is really just this composition of uh those two maps and the demand because that's our data so we demand that this is actually a regular function. So f upper star is usually a type of a pullback. And it's the only thing you can do because the way phi works, phi goes from here to here, right? So I can't post compose it with f. I can only, with some map from v to something, I can only pre compose it with some map. And this is exactly what I do. And I pull it back uh, to v and I demand that this thing is a regular function because we are looking at regular functions at the moment right to kind of make sense and it's essentially the definition of a morphism uh between ring spaces or varieties or whatever you want it is a following well you have some structure you have a topological space right x and y so the map is continuous fine that's what you would do anyway but more more importantly or kind of the key player here is this condition that we had so if you have something in one of the sheaves, then the pullback is also uh, in one of the sheaves. And this is not quite the most general definition for ring spaces, because I now assume that I have maps down to the ground field attached. Let's just do that for now. Slightly silly definition, in the sense that a ring space and sometimes is more general. But anyway, so this definition satisfies all the properties you want morphisms to satisfy. Compositions of them still have the same property. You have restriction properties and many other things that I have, I have to postpone for another video. So this is kind of the, really the right definition. It looks a bit strange, but maybe if you have this picture in mind, it's kind of the only thing you can do, the only thing you can really demand if you uh, have well, regular functions attached to your spaces. Right? So there are only two things you can do. First of all, you have a topological space. So sure, you want it to be continuous. Fine. That's what you do all the time. And then you have this condition because that's our data that we have attached. And we call that a morphism, a map or whatever, a homomorphism, whatever type of notion you prefer of ringed spaces. In particular, of varieties, because from now on, I usually will see varieties as ringed spaces. Okay. And kind of a little bit of a subtlety here, but we'll see in a second why that is important. Um, so there should be now an equivalence relation. Remember, the cow was equivalent to the sphere. So what is a correct equivalence relation? A correct equivalence relation here is isomorphism. So what is a correct notion of isomorphism? It turns out that you need to demand that, well, the usual thing, you are bijective, but also you want the inverse to be uh, satisfying this property. And you really want that. I'll give you an example uh, on the next slide. So inverse needs to satisfy the property as well. It needs to be continuous and it needs to have this a pullback of regular functions type uh, property. And the example is kind of the following. So if you consider a variety, everyone likes varieties. Here's a nice variety. X squared minus Y cubed equals zero. And it has this little 
singularity here at the origin. It's like a little cusp type type thing. And no matter how you feel about it, what am I saying? Don't take me by word, come to your own conclusions. But at least I feel like whatever our equivalence relation between spaces is supposed to be, we are doing algebraic geometries. You know, somehow the singularity plays an important role. So we don't want to be able to smoothen it out. We're not doing topology, we're doing algebraic geometry. We're not smoothing out singularity. So we don't want this to be equivalent to the line. That doesn't, that doesn't, we don't like that in algebraic geometry. So whatever kind of definition of equivalent of isomorphism we have, this is better not equivalent to a line, right? So the cubic above, uh, this one here, the, the, the blue one, should not be isomorphic to a line. There's a singularity and we want to keep track of singularities. Maybe we're doing geometry, not topology. In topology, we'll just flatten that out. But in geometry, you care about singularities. Let's just say it this way. And you can easily kind of write down a map from the line. What is a line? Let's say R. R is a line. To V, just, just this one. T cubed, T squared. And this is a morphism, and you can check that it's bijective. Fine. Essentially, by definition, this is bijective. Uh, just look at the way the curve is defined. But the good thing is the inverse is actually not a morphism. So I just wrote down what the inverse is, and it blows up at the origin. Like, um, if y is not 0, it's just this expression. If y is 0, it's 0. But uh, as soon as y goes closer to 0, it just blows up at the origin. So we did some form of our job here. Uh, this funny... No, no, not funny. It's not funny. It's, an, it's a nice little cubic with a singularity. It's not isomorphic to a line, so we can't smoothen out that singularity, and that's what we want, right? We're not doing the polish. that's what we want. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I also hope to see you next time.